This incredible spiky ball is Nipa. It is actually a bunch of individual palm fruits that are stuck together into a big cluster. Years ago, I found one of the individual fruits for sale at a market in Thailand. It was, without a doubt, the most difficult fruit that I have ever tried to open. Son of a bitch, I hate you. Open. After a huge amount of trouble, I found a kind lady with a cleaver who agreed to open it for me. Yes! <laughs> Thank you! After all of that trouble, I was disappointed to find out that the edible part on the inside tasted like an old candle. However, people do eat Nipa. I was just doing it wrong. So today, everybody, I'm going to try Nipa again. But this time, we're going to do it right. I'm going to try the fruit, and I'm also going to try a popular drink that is made from the sap of the Nipa palm. And in order to do this, we're going on a boat ride. I am in a Nipa palm mangrove right now. Uh, Nipa palms are the only palm tree that grow in mangroves. The trunk of the palm is underwater, and then they go up and only the leaves and stalks come above. And maybe we'll be lucky and see one of the fruits if we keep looking. Nipa is a local specialty that you're unlikely to find at a market. The best way to get it is to go and collect it yourself. My new friend Jenny from the Nature Fruit Farm Resort was kind enough to bring me to a village where Nipa grows. So, how do you tell if a Nipa palm is ripe? Like, oh, actually, we go and go to the Nipa palm and we take one and try it, see okay. whether it's good, perfect or not. So you, you can't tell from the outside so much. Yeah, no. You have to you have to go in and cut it open yourself yes, to see. Yes. And when you cut it open, uh, what do you look for on the inside? Uh, it it looks like jelly. Uh -huh. Then that is perfect. Okay. All right, thank you. As we floated along, Jenny's friend checked in order to find a good Nipa fruit. This wasn't easy. The first few that he tested were too hard inside. She's grabbing just one piece. I think that's okay. Make sure it's worth getting the whole bunch. <laughs> it's hot also. Okay. Yeah, it's hot. Ah, oh, it's too no. hard in there. Yeah. Okay. So it's not worth getting that one. <laughs> This one's no good. Back into the drink. <laughs> it's still a little bit hard. A little hard. Yeah, still a little uh, bit. It's hard. not too bad though. Yeah. 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 Can it's can eat, but not not perfect. Not perfect. Yes. Okay. This one is like halfway there. Not sure if we would find a better one, we decided to take the half-ripe Nipa fruit with us. Then on the way back, he spotted one that looked promising and we decided to check it. That's the one. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. We got one. <laughs> it took three tries. We cut down three of these and they were really hard on the inside. This one is really soft and like jelly like. So this one should be really good. All right. Taking it home. <laughs> 
So I'm going to attempt to open one of these without cutting my hand off. Each one of these is like a little keyed in fruit, but they're kind of tough, so I'm probably gonna have to smack into it with this, this cleaver to get one free. Yeah. There we go, yeah. yeah. But you can see how they key into there like that. There's like a core in the middle that they're firmly attached to. But when, they, when these get very old, these break apart and they float in the water and they can go further down and then plant somewhere else. Okay. Inside you see, it's still liquidy in there. It's not fully formed even as a gel. So much different than the one that I had before. As you can see comes out just like a little bit of jello. <laughs> Doesn't have a strong smell, but it smells nice. It's really good. The flavor, it's really nice. You know, when I had this before, I had it old, and it tasted like wax. <laughs> this tastes more like a very tender coconut. It's not very sweet. It's like a one. Very low. Kind of like how like a sweet coconut water is. No tartness, no bitterness. This is really mild, refreshing, and yeah, like coconutty. The closest I would say is like kind of like a mild coconut water kind of flavor, but with like a really nice soft texture. It's really cool to get a chance to try this again and try it properly. I, know, I had a bad experience with this and I thought that this fruit was just not a good fruit before. When you have it at the right stage where it is less ripe, it is really nice. And I'm not done. There is more that can be done with the Nipah palm. So in front of me here, I have three different products made from Nipah palm. Uh, this is something that you might find for sale uh, by some like local vendors. It is the Nipa palm fruit that I just tried, but uh, mixed with sugar. So this can be uh, sold as a, as a dessert here. It looks a little bit like some other sorts of palm fruit, like uh, toddy palm or uh, sugar palm also are sold this way, where it's just like sugar and a little bit of a mild uh, palm fruit. So I'm gonna try it this way first. Not that one. <laughs> it's nice when you have it this way. It tastes a little bit more like uh, coconut in that way, but it's delicate. You know, it's probably the best word for this. The texture is really soft, mild flavor. It's also been chilled, so it's very refreshing. Like I can easily eat like a big bowl of this, like I'm eating like a bowl of Jello. What I've got here is pretty interesting. Uh, this is not from the fruit, this is from the sap of the nipa palm. A sap exudes from where it was cut, and people will tap that and collect it. This right here is just straight nipa palm liquid. But if you ferment it, you get this, which is called twak. So this has only been fermented for like half a day, not, not a very strong fermentation in this. But if you wanted to take a step further, you can ferment this more and uh, distill it, and you get another drink called Arak. Arak might sound familiar to you because it exists in other countries. You can find this in the Middle East, you can find it in the Balkans, and you can find it in Southeast Asia. And the reason why this exists in multiple places is due to the Arab Islamic conquests of a long time ago. Like, Iraq is a very old beverage from the Middle East. I believe it's from like the 12th century or 13th century. It's very, very old. Uh, but how they make it there is different than how it's made here uh, with Nipah palm. Instead, it's used with grapes and aniseed. So, because of that, it's very different, very different. But that name and I think similar fermentation process comes from that history which is really, really cool. So uh, this is gonna be interesting to try. So first, I'm gonna just try it 
straight on its own, uh, not fermented at all. So this is just the sap taken from the Nipa palm. That's really good. Um, it's, it's familiar, but kind of hard to describe. So let's uh, let's break it down. First of all, it's um, sweet. It is sweeter than the fruit. It's like a seven out of ten. It's also a little tart. I would give it a three out of ten. It's not as tart as an orange, but it's got a little bit of sourness to it. It's not like coconut water. It looks like coconut water. I was kind of expecting it to taste like coconut water. It's not. I don't know if I've ever had anything quite like that, honestly. I'd say the closest that I can get to is like a mild sort of drink, like sugar cane juice, like that sort of thing. But what's in here that I find very strange uh, is it's a little bit sulfuric. There's a little eggy taste to it, which is very unique. I've never had a drink quite like that, but it um, goes down very easy. and. Uh, my guess is that when you ferment it, some other magic's gonna happen. I think some of those other flavors are gonna are gonna change a little bit. So let's try it after it's been fermented for uh, half a day. I thought that this might have a touch of a fermented taste, like tastes like wine or something. It doesn't. It, it tastes very similar, but uh, after being fermented, it it is just kind of like mellowed out a little bit. It's a little less sweet, and like those flavors are the same, but they've they've kind of like evened out a little bit. This is maybe a little bit easier to drink than taking it straight. But both of these are quite good, and I, I'm kind of curious what the distilled one will will taste like. So I'll see if I can try to find that. But if not, uh, Nipa palm is a very interesting fruit. I mean, it looks amazing. How it grows is really interesting. The use for it is interesting, and just like needing to try it at just the right phase, if you have it the wrong way, like I did, you can have a bad experience with Nipa Palm. But if you have it properly, it's really nice. And the drink made out of it, also very nice. So I think that's about it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye bye. There are so many mud skippers around here. And I just can't help but think about the famous theme song. Who's the greatest mud skipper of them all? Who can skip through the mud with the greatest of ease? What kind of wonderful guy? Who can crawl like a dog without scraping its knees? Who's got segmented eyes? It's Muddy Mud Skipper. Muddy Mud Skipper. It's the Muddy Mud Skipper Show. I would like to give a very big shout out to Smarter Every Day and JMac. They are mega patrons over on my Patreon page, which I've linked in the description below. If you are not familiar with Patreon, this is a way that you can support creators like me and get some really cool bonuses in return, like exclusive content, early access. There's even one where I will send you cool stuff in the mail. You gotta check it out, and that is linked below. If you don't want to go on Patreon, another way you can support the channel is by getting a t-shirt, like the one that I'm wearing right now. This is the Durian Anatomy shirt, which is available in the description below. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.